Thank you for coming out, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hall of Dino Presidents. We will now introduce you to one of America's the biggest leaders and one of the most famous, the Dino Presidents. As we are now start the presentation. So, be ready. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to present to you the Hall of Dino Presidents. And most importantly of all, welcome to Robert World. You see, Robert World usually have fun, but in this case, we're here to learn about history. And for the love of America, it inspired us to create the Hall of Dino Presidents, as we want to introduce you to one of America's biggest leaders. So, our legacy is, is, to look, is to honor the, the actual presidency and the American presidents. It is 1783. And the smoke is clearing in the wake of the Revolutionary War. Over the course of eight grinding years, General George Washington has led a force of shopkeepers, farmers, and Native American allies to victory over the greatest military power in the world. A new nation has been born, independent and free. The founders must form a national government. In 1787, through months of passionate debate, they create a written constitution. For the country's highest office, they imagine something new in the history of the world. A leader not born to power like a king or queen. A leader who has not seized power through conquest. A leader not separate from the people, but elected by the people, from among the people. We the people. This is a new idea, an American idea, the idea of a president. The people don't know exactly what a president will be, but there is little doubt who it will be. George Washington's stature and bearing have marked him as a leader. His integrity has made him a great one. Washington knows that many generals who have led successful revolutions make themselves dictators or kings. Instead, he steps down from power and retires to his home, Mount Vernon. The world takes note, and George Washington becomes the symbol of American ideals. In the first presidential election, it's Washington by a landslide. The only doubt seems to be his own. He writes, integrity and firmness is all I can promise. Integrity and firmness is exactly what we need. Everything he does as president will set a model for his successors. His final act may be the most important of all. After two terms, with no term limit in the Constitution and amid overwhelming support to stay in office, he steps down once again and hands power back to the people. He wants us to speak, to elect a new president. During the early years of the Republic, we choose leaders as different as Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and Andrew Jackson. Elections are often bitter. Each president stands at that fiery intersection where personal character meets the challenges of the times. Some call the presidency a glorious burden. Jefferson calls it a splendid misery. We the people must choose well. We elect 15 presidents before the course of history brings us to the edge of a crisis like no other. 
a nation born of freedom still permits slavery. As the country pushes west, will new states be slave or free? The question produces bitter conflict. The issue rocks the election of 1860 and brings Abraham Lincoln onto the national stage. The tall, lanky, some say uncouth candidate from Illinois is a master of words at a time when speeches are printed in full for people to read. A house divided against itself cannot stand, he has said. With Lincoln's election, the house does indeed divide. Civil War. Eleven states secede from the Union. The war becomes a defining passage in the American story. The president's own inner strength and depth of character changed the course of history. Lincoln had come up the hard way on the American frontier, desperately poor, with less than a year of formal schooling. His early years were scarred by tragedy, the death of his mother, his sister, his first love. He struggles with depression, but never loses his determination to rise above it. He once said he's driven by a desire to leave the world a little better place for having lived in it. The war rages. Lincoln fights to preserve the Union and end slavery. Neither is a sure thing. At Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, six months after one of the bloodiest battles of the war, the president dedicates a cemetery to the thousands of soldiers who died there in words we can never forget. In the 1860s, before the 1860s, there was an issue with slavery. There were horrors of slavery I couldn't even imagine. Some slaves had to work as workers. And if they didn't work, they get beaten to death. Or even struggled. Right now, I... I managed to rise above it. I managed to abolish slavery. But however, slavery is still not over yet. People are still being treated unfairly. Right now, we are still struggling with these same issues. When I was elected president, I noticed that slavery needed to stop because it would soon tear the country apart and you in the United States would be in a bad mood. Right now, I needed to change the law. Slavery would become illegal again. But today, slavery is still not over yet. People are still being treated unfairly. And many people are beginning to work together under slave owners. Right now, well, we're still working with these problems. Right now, we still got one way to go. And I'll, and I'll tell you this one thing. We will end slavery together throughout my legacy. Throughout my legacy, I'll always be a part of the, of the United States of history. And I promise I'll end slavery throughout my legacy. And in my honor, even though I am gone, I can still help you be my memories. And plus, we the people can change the world. So that all people can be treated good and equally. And together, the United States can be a great place again under the protections of, pre of the presidency of the American presidents. And together, we will end slavery together. And now, is our long way to go. So, we're going to let our journey begin from here. And then we're going to end slavery together, and hopefully it will, it will not start again in the future.
President Lincoln's enduring hope is to give true meaning to the sacrifices of so many, to lead us to that new birth of freedom. With the end of the war and the end of slavery, a new birth truly begins. As we roll toward the 20th century, settlers roll west on wagon wheels and railroads connect the nation coast to coast. Millions of immigrants pour in from Europe and Asia. Population doubles. Our economy triples. Our standing among nations rises. We need presidents who can lead both at home and abroad. At the same time, a young Theodore Roosevelt is retreating from New York politics and personal tragedy. The death of his wife and his mother on the same day in the same house. In the badlands of North Dakota, he rethinks his life and the life of his country. He returns stronger in body and spirit. His renewed energy is just what his country needs. American industry is booming, but social tensions are rising. A progressive movement is bubbling up, pushing for change. And change is needed in the working and living conditions in cities. The gap widens between rich and poor. The demand for change grows stronger. Teddy Roosevelt is a knight on a crusade. He speaks with force and vitality in clear terms that make colorful headlines at a time when mass market newspapers have become the new media. To define his foreign policy, he borrows a phrase from an African proverb speak softly and carry a big stick but his greatest accomplishments are made at home he breaks up giant monopolies protects workers rights and calls for a square deal for all americans rich and poor capitalist and wage earner he calls on America to be as great as the natural grandeur of its lands. Keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground, he tells us. And we do.
today. Changes. The country changes. And yet, in one sense, what we need most from our presidents has never changed. A guiding vision that calls forth the best that America can be. Will outer space be developed for the benefit of all mankind? Or will it become another focus for the arms race? The choice is urgent, and it is ours to make. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. But really, it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And we shall overcome. What are the agreements that President Sadat and Prime Minister Begin are signing tonight is entitled A Framework for Peace in the Middle East. Mr. Gorbachev, Tear down this wall. You have lost too much, but you have certainly not lost America. Now we 
come to the present. Once again, we place our trust in the idea of a president, as we have from the beginning. My fellow citizens, it is I who I just became your first president. And you know that I should become popular. Well, the reason I have become popular is because of my role in, in, in the Revolutionary War during the American Revolution. I speak out for the soldiers. We must fight to survive to protect our country. And to give out more freedom. In my speeches, I become impersonally impressive. Right now, we are, in, we, we are in the middle of a war and get an even powerful art. And together, we will fight to protect our country at all costs. Fellow citizens, it is I, Donald Trump, who is I who became your 45th President of the United States. Together, I am still here, and I will run for presidency for a while now. Right now, I'm still stuck with you guys, and we will make new laws to keep the presidency alive. And together, we, we will make our country a safe country to give us more freedom and hopefully avoid another war. If there is, then our soldiers will make the ultimate sacrifice to keep our country safe. And we will never abandon it. If we do, what hope do we have left? Right now, I will keep the idea of a president alive forever in my legacy when I quit politics. And I try to run my presidency. And I will always be right there by your side. Forever. I will keep the country alive. And together, the presidency will remain forever in the United States of America. Forever. The presidency of the United States is a role unique in the world. An office entrusted to each president by us. We, the people, therein lies the genius of that new idea, now over 200 years old. A new idea our presidents have turned into a great American idea again and again. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us into the Hall of Dino Presidents. So please exit to your right and gather your personal belongings. So happy exit and have a great day at Robert World.